Most of the laser engraving machines on the market today are in the 30 to 40 watt power range. While there are occasional machines that claim higher power, usually these high power claims are achieved by stacking two laser wavelengths, which in most cases may be considered a misleading promotional tactic. However, the Aiden Stack Glacier 120 watt laser engraver differs in that it claims to have a 120 watt power output. At first, I suspected that, that this was another misleading promotion, but after seeing its cutting results, I realized that I was wrong. What follows is an in-depth look at how this machine performs. The Aiden Stack Glacier 120 watt has a working area of 6,400 square centimeters. As a result, it takes about 110 by 120 centimeters of space. The machine uses 20 mm by 40 mm aluminum profiles to form the frame, and the overall quality is quite good. The joints are fixed using hexagonal screws. The machine is equipped with a semiconductor laser emitter with a wavelength of 450 nanometers and a maximum power of 120 watts. To control the 120 watt power consumption, Aiden Stack has equipped it with an inverter chiller with a cooling capacity of 420 watts. You might think this chiller is a bit redundant, but it's essential if you want the machine to have a longer lifespan and stay quiet. It allows the machine to run at a much lower noise level. It enables quieter operation and keeps the laser head cooler than the traditional heat pipe, plus a high-speed fan solution, thus extending its life. In addition, the fully enclosed design of the laser head effectively prevents the risk of the laser head from covering by dust. In addition, the machine is equipped with an air-assisted device for use with the laser head. This device removes dust generated during the engraving and cutting process by airflow, preventing yellowing of the surface of the cut lines and extending the life of the laser. Although this unit is the noisiest part of the entire machine, I think it's a reasonable trade-off considering the many advantages the air assist brings. All of this equipment is connected to a single controller. The chiller communicates with the controller via a serial port and can detect if the chiller is on, if it is working, and even stop the machine from running in the event of a clogged water line. The air assist unit is simpler to connect and is only connected via the 24 volt output on the left side. Unlike the chiller, it doesn't have an additional cable for communication, which can cause some inconvenience during use. For example, I can only use this physical speed controller to adjust airflow, not via software, and it lacks the ability to detect if the auxiliary devices are working. The controller is also equipped with a physical emergency stop button, four status indicators, and a physical auto focus button. There are three ways to use or connect the Aiden stack. The first is to connect it to a PC or Mac using the Type-C connector on the right side and operate it via the Aiden Stack Studio or Lightburn. The second connects via the Wi-Fi of the configured machine. The third is to connect it to a supplied screen via the HDMI port on the side and select the files for engraving via the USB port on the side. Additionally, when using high-power laser equipment, it is recommended to take protective measures in advance. Although the machine is equipped with the protective glasses on the laser head at the factory, a small amount of laser might still leak out during operation, similar to the intense glare shown in this image. The packaging includes a standard professional safety goggles, which can be worn to completely prevent any leaked laser light from entering your eyes. If you feel this is insufficient, you can also purchase the fully enclosed protective cover. Although this machine has a maximum power of 120 watts, it has not been activated while we were filming for it. Although it can be activated in a light burn, we still use the Aiden Stack Studio for convenience. We first tried cutting a 3mm thick piece of basewood plywood, setting the cutting speed to 1200mm per minute. And the cut was very smooth with no burrs and much less carbonation marks than I had expected. I was a little surprised by the effect of the air assist. So we cut again, but uh, turned off the air assist. Compared to when the air assist was turned on, the edge were more carbonized. 
Next, we tested a piece of a 15 mm thick birch plywood. Initially, we cut it at a speed of a 200 mm per minute. The uh, finished product could be removed directly. When we increased the speed to 300 mm per minute, the finished product had only a slight adhesion, but we could still remove it easily. The process of cutting a particle board was equally smooth. For this 5 mm thick particle board, we used a speed of a 1200 mm per minute, and the edges were still clean, with only minimal burn marks. Wood may be too easy for this machine, so we also tried cutting a black acrylic sheet. The first acrylic sheet was cut smoothly with a clean and smooth edges. However, on the second one, the elimination occurred 6mm below the edge. In summary, this machine handles edges of wood and acrylic around 6mm thickness quite well. However, once the thickness exceeds this, physical limitations of the laser cause layering on the cut edges. Additionally, without air assistance, carbonization and adhesion issues are more likely to occur when processing thicker materials. For this machine with a maximum power output of 120 watts, engraving is easy, but controlling the output power is challenging. Therefore, Aiden Stack provides four power settings in the software for users to switch between. You can switch between the four different levels to achieve varying levels of engraving quality. Additionally, you can set different levels for different lines using layers. For example, in this pattern, we set the black lines as engraving lines and use the 40 watt level. The blue lines use the 100 watt level, allowing the finished products to be removed easily. In our test, the Aiden Stack Glacier 120 watt took only about 11 minutes to engrave a 40 by 40 centimeters Bitcoin pattern. However, we operated in a bit of a hurry, and from a distance, the vector image looked okay, but uh, a closer look reveals the uh, problem. Don't worry, this is a uh, common problem with the laser engravers on the market. This is uh, mainly due to physical interior. So after slowing down and spending another 25 minutes on the carving, the uh, final result was still quite good. When switching to photo engraving, the uh, situation is different. We can uh, adjust the uh, size of the spot when engraving by adjusting the amount of power output. When engraving with a uh, 100 watt power, the laser energy is stronger and the engraving depth is deeper, which makes it suitable for applications that uh, require high contrast and deep engraving. In contrast, when engraving with a 40 watts of power, the uh, laser energy is lower and the depth of engraving is shallower, but the uh, detail is more finely rendered and there's less burning. Therefore, choosing the uh, right power should be decided according to the engraving needs. If you are pursuing deep engraving and high contrast effects, 100 watt is ideal. If uh, focusing on the uh, details and uh, shallow engraving effects, 40 watt is more appropriate. After completing simple tasks, we were curious about how this machine would perform in large-scale projects. So we took a full advantage of its large working area and arranged 16 vector graphics for engraving on this machine, which took 97 minutes. When we checked the final products, we found that the, uh, the first and last vector graphics were basically the same. This indicates that the uh, chiller indeed helps the machine maintain stable laser output power during uh, prolonged operation. Although the uh, air-assisted device produces significant noise, we observed the minimal dust residue or discoloration on the 16 vector graphics. Unfortunately, this was not achievable due to limitations in conditions. We did attempt a 15-hour uh, engraving task once, but since the machine calibration was not fully optimized at the time, only the first and last results were consistent, so it could not be used as a valid reference. After our comprehensive testing, the Aiden Stack Glacier 120 Watt demonstrated its power capabilities with its ultra-high power and large working area, dispelling my doubts about high power claims. Its cutting performance is outstanding, efficiently and cleanly processing a variety of materials. While the air-assisted system and the compressor base cooling further ensure the machine's stability, Considering the machine's ultra-high power, the software offers multiple power settings and layering functions, enhancing the machine's flexibility. However, Aiden Stack has not yet overcome physical limitations, and layering issues may occur when processing extremely thick materials.